Main project. So in this short video, I'll be talking about weapon options that Deha um, could use that you already have up to version 3.4. So this will exclude her signature weapon, the Beacon of the Reed Sea, which will be debuting in 3.5 in just a few days from publishing of this video. So um, we're just going to go over all the different Claymore options that are available that we could have. I don't have all of them, of course, but I'll try my best to go over them. So I'm using, of course, the Luke here as a stand-in here. Um, so let's just quickly go over it. So um, with the five star options, she actually does not do well with shielding. So actually, she will not be able to use the unforged because um, the passive requires you to be shielded to get additional, you know, damage basically, right? So um, I would not give the unforged to your Deha. Um, if you have the Song of Broken Pines, this is a physical damage one for specifically Eula. This would not really do well for Deha either, unless you try to build her as a physical and pyro character. I mean, sure. And if you somehow happen to have extra copies of this from way back when, because there wasn't a re Eula rerun in over a year, maybe, but um, I don't recommend this either. The Wolf's Gravestone will match her aesthetic because it's red and black and white and everything so this would be cool and this is a standard character uh standard weapon um that you can get from the standard um banner and also from losing 50 50 on any of the ban on the um uh, uh, the weapon banner so this is also an option for her um because the official um tweet and post about Deha's skills and all that has come out already from Hoyoverse, um, where they have the little gift animations about her, you know, skill and burst. And in there, it does say that she will be split scaling for her, um, I believe, skill, maybe burst too, where it's um, attack and HP scaling, um, because she will be basically serving a tanker role where she'll be re taking redirected damage from the active on-field player. So that's the, where the HP side comes in. But the attack side is where you're going to need to buck her. So this is an attack substat, as you can see, and the passive is also attack. So this would do well for her. And there's an HP um, passive here as well. So the Wolf's Gravestone is actually turning out to be quite a great option for her. And it makes sense because this is a standard weapon and she will be appearing on the standard weapon, uh, sorry, the standard banner in 3.6 onwards. So why not, right? This makes sense. If you don't have, um, if you happen to have extra copies of this and you don't have um, her Reed C um, Claymore. Okay, so Skyward Pride, this would be more of a supportive weapon um, because of the energy recharge aspect, but it does increase her attacks and all that. So this could be an option, but this is not going to be her top option. But you might have a few of these lying around as well because this is another standard weapon. Okay, now moving on to the four stars. So she will be an on-field DPS and she'll take redirected um, damage, obviously, from your um, other characters. So if you happen to have these other weapons, um, then tr give them a try as well. The Akua Maru is a powerful, powerful limited series um, five-star Inazuma weapon. So again, not everyone will have this, um, and maybe not everyone's going to have this at high refine. So even at R1, this is a powerful weapon, but this is really just to boost her burst. It does not boost her normal attack and her elemental skill. So keep that in mind. But if you have no one else using this, then and this could work for her. Again, another supportive option would be the craftable Katsuragiri Nagamasa. This is okay as well because of her skill. Um, at least the damage will increase for her pyro AOE field, right? So, you know, there's that aspect to it. And then there's the energy um, recharge aspect to it too. So this could be an option for supportive Deha players. And of course, the Sea Lord. This was way back already. So not many newer players probably won't have this. So um, this is similar to the Akuo Maru, but less powerful, but similar. It's on par with it. So yeah, this is basically like a free event version of the Akuo Maru. Okay, the Serpent's Mind, this is a Battle Pass exclusive weapon. I don't have high refines on this, um, but this would match her aesthetic beautifully. It's a crit rate substat. She doesn't scale off of that, but anyone that's a DPS in the game will require crit rate, right? So why not? So this would be good if you're going to main her or use her on field for a lot of the time and you're willing to buy the battle pass for this, then this is an option as well. Um, next, the, we have the Black Cliff Slasher. This is a crit damage one. The passive will not be sustainable unless it's fight. you're fighting like small mobs where you can kill up to three small enemies. If you're fighting single target enemies or single enemies or bosses or elites, you will not get the passive stacks. But at the very least, the sub stat crit damage is a great, um, you know, 
uh, stat booster and simple to have because then you wouldn't have to focus on the crit damage side of things. You can just focus on crit rate or other um, stats that you're trying to get to compensate for her kit. Um, we can skip the white line because defense doesn't do anything for her. Um, the prototype archaic, another craftable. This one is okay. It's not horrible. It is attack scaling as well. So this is not a bad option. Um, sacrificial greatsword, energy recharge. Based on what we've seen from the demo live stream and also on the gifts, her AoE does last quite a while. So this is not going to be a suitable situation for her because the passive is really about proccing the skill twice within a short t period of time. But her AoE does stay on the field for quite a bit of time, so you, I would skip this. Unless you have nothing else better, then this could be a placeholder for her. Um, so she does scale off of HP, as I just said, and it's official from the gifts and the little description with including her birthday and her likes and dislikes and stuff like that. So um, she does scale off of HP because she is going to be tanking and she's going to redirect damage from other players, or other characters. So then technically the bell could work for her, but it does cast a little shield on her, which she doesn't like. So I don't know if you have no one else to give the bell to and you don't really plan to really use her somehow. But then I don't know then in that case, why would you pull her if you don't plan to use her? But if we get her from the standard banner in the future, if you're watching this past 3.6, right, and we get her, then maybe, and you don't really want to use her and you don't have anyone else to give the bell to, um, then maybe this could be a good option. Um, in my past, when I talked about um, Dory, because um, Dory scales off HP, um, so it works for her, that's why it's on Dory. Okay, so then Favonia's Greatsword. This is, again, if you're not planning to use her in a major role, but a supportive role, I can see where you go on, maybe proc her um, AoE field onto the ground, and then maybe switch her out, maybe, and then she can get redirected damage to her, perhaps, I don't know, right? And then then this could work, maybe, where you can just give her supportive um, aspects to get her energy recharged, uh, but you would have to make sure that you proc her passive, so you would have to make sure she has crit rate, though, to get the crit hits. Forest Regalia, this is a Sumeru um, craftable. This could work as well. Um, if you do plan to use her on field and do plan to use her in a reaction team where you can do any of those dendro related reactions with pyro basically, so it's gonna be burning and burgeon, right? So then this could work and it is supportive as well. So it's up to you if you wanna play her a supportive or quick swap or main DPS. Um, Snow Tomb, this is similar to the discussion above about the Broken Pines. It's a physical one, so I would probably just skip this one unless you're planning to build her as um, physical and you have no other options, then sure, this is optional, but this is a Dragon Spine craftable. And then she's not a Lee Yura character, so the Lithic Blade doesn't do anything for her unless you happen to have no other Claymore options to give her, then at least she can benefit from the attack substat, um, you know just for that, but then the passive won't really help because she's not a Lear character unless you team her up with a bunch of Lear characters, like three of them, or t at least two, right? And then um, she won't make use of the Rain Flasher because it doesn't, the passive is not suitable for her pyro or um, or situation, and Elemental Mastery doesn't work for her. And then if we're going to go to the three stars, um, the Ferris Shadow, I was just looking at this right before doing this video, this is actually interesting because if you don't plan to really use her, but you say you get her from like the standard banner and you don't want to equip her with something, and you don't have the bell because usually people trash the bell and just fodder it anyway, but you happen to have this and you don't want to invest too much in her, maybe this is an option because she can at least benefit from the HP scaling, right? Now, um, she won't really do much in terms of the passive. I mean, the passive is okay because when her HP decreases because she's going to take damage for other characters, um, then her charge attack will increase. But it's not going to be a big deal, but at least she can use this, and this is a low investment option. Um, staying on the vein of three-star options, this um, Bloodstained uh, Greatsword, um, at least as Pyro for the um, passive, but the Elemental Mastery may or may not work, depending on if you want to make, make her a reactionary team um, character, perhaps. I mean, this is an option, right? And then lastly, the debate club, she will get, um, benefit from the attack substat. And um, yeah, the passive is okay for her. I would say, yes, um, just to sum up this video then, her best option outside of her re uh, beacon of the Reed Sea is going to be the Wolf's Gravestone. And if you want, you can give her the Skyward Pride. And then um, other options uh, would be the Serpent Spine and the Black Cliff Slasher um, and the Prototype Archaic as well as the forest regalia. I think those are her prime options. And then if you really wanted to do more of a niche sub build, then like a supportive build, then maybe the bell, the Favonius greatsword would be fine. Um, the forest regalia, even though I said that it's a supportive kind of weapon, but then technically, if you're going to build in a reactionary team, she will be on the field then, right? So this could be either way. Yeah. And then another sub 
supportive one would be the Katsura Kikiri. And um, yeah, I think those are the greatest options. But if you want to build her like on the cheap and don't really plan to use her much and you just get her in the future for after 3.6 from the standard banner from losing 50-50 on a featured character banner, then yeah, like, you know, Pharaoh Shadow, Blood Stained or Blood Tainted Greatsword um, and the Debate Club, those ones would be great options as well. Um, I don't believe I'm missing any others, but let me just quickly, um, just quickly go to my other archive here because I don't have all the weapons. So I'm gonna quickly see if I um, miss any claymores and we'll just wrap this up. Yeah. Oops. Oh, the royal weapon. Yeah, those are just not a good series to begin with. Um, oh, and then this one is the um, red horn. That's just a defense one. That's not recommended. And then the Makaivara. This is an um, elemental mastery um, Sumeru exclusive limited series. So I wouldn't recommend any of those. And then from the three star side, these ones, the Skyrider Greatsword. And what is this? Um, the White Iron Greatsword. These are only gotten from the chest in, I think, Lear and the Chasm region, which I don't have any of these because I fought them long ago. So I only realized that you can't get them from the gotcha recently, actually. So anyway, these um, may be okay for her if you have no other options, but those other three three stars were, were good enough for her. All right, so that's just to wrap this up then. So we know which options are good for her. What do you think? Which um, option are you going to give her? Or maybe you're just going to give her like a three-star option because I'm leaning towards just giving her a three-star option if I ever get her in the standard banner in the future because I don't really plan to use her. That's just me. <laughs> but um, yeah, or maybe I'll give her something like that I that no other character is using like at the time. Maybe I'll if I pull another Wolf's Gravestone, maybe and then I'll just give it to her. Or maybe I can just give her like the Black Cliff because these are built already, right? Like Serpent's Fan, no one's using them, right? So yeah, those are my options. Or maybe the Forest Regalia, you know? Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Anyway, those are my um, uh, my thoughts on what kind of weapon options she could use. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.